Okay, in this video I want to talk about CSS pseudo classes and pseudo elements, what the difference is between them and how you can use them. There's actually a really, really long list now of pseudo classes and pseudo elements that you can use. <coughs> Pardon me. The difference, the main difference between them is that with pseudo classes, and this is the list that I've got right here, down this side here on the left, these are all things that apply to elements that actually exist inside the HTML. So if there's a p tag or an a tag or a div or a section, any tag, as long as there is that element, then you can apply a pseudo class to it. A pseudo class means a tag under certain conditions, in a certain state, with something being done to it, something has been done to it by the browser, by the user, there's a special condition that applies to that element. Hover, you're hovering over some element active you're clicking on a link. It's the active link. As you click on it, it is the in the active state. Um, something which is an anchor tag, which is actually a link. It's not just a target, an anchor tag with an ID. This means that there is an href attribute. Uh, checked, having to do with forms. So I've got a checked, a checkbox right here, which I can check. If it is checked, then this would apply to that, and I can style some of the properties. Um, it's not checked that's lacking when I say some of the properties, it's the fact that form elements are notoriously difficult to style and to do it consistently across all the browsers. There's so many variations on them. Um, so I have a few examples here that I've got working on the page. So paragraph with the hover pseudo class. With the pseudo class, when I come over here, as I mouse over, you can see that they change. I'm changing the font weight to be bold, and I'm changing the color to Rebecca Purple. So that's the hover. Input, required. Well, if we look at the input, the text one is required. The input checkbox is not required, but it is checked by default. So if I refresh this page, there we are. This is checked, this is required, this is optional. So in my styles, required, I'm putting that border on there. If I was to comment this out, oops, like that, and I refresh my page, there, it goes back to the default styling. So that's what required allows me to do. I can change some of the styling about this because in the HTML, I've said that it's required. The checkbox, what I'm doing with checked is I'm saying, the margin is 4 REM, so there's a, a big amount of space all around this. If it's not checked, then it falls back to this first one. I've got two things that are applying to it, the optional and the checked. Actually, I'm not doing the font size. We're not. That's not impacting this at all. For the optional, 2 REM, and then if it's checked, 4 REM. Because I did it in this order from top to bottom, they're equal weighted. The specificity is the same on both of them. This one applies first, and then this one applies. So when I turn this off, you can see that the margin on all four sides shrinks. When I select it, it increases. So I'm going from 2 to 4 REM. In this state, it's not checked, but it is optional. In this state, it's optional and checked. So both are applying, so the second one wins out. For the paragraph, last of type. It's the last paragraph on the page is this one down here, so it's got a much bigger font size. And BR, I've got a line break tag right here in between the two inputs. And line breaks, there is no content. This is an empty HTML tag. I could also write it as this. Now, nobody ever does that. It's a self-closing tag. This is the way that you write it. But this element, which is empty, I'm increasing the line height to 4 REM. So I'm creating this extra space here. If I were to comment this out and refresh my page, you can see there's a lot less distance here. I come back and I remove the comments. Now watch the spacing as I in between these two elements as I refresh the page. There, right, we can see much bigger spacing. It pushed the stuff off the top of the page. So I'm increasing the line height on that BR. Okay, so these are all pseudo classes, and you can play around with all of these. I'm not going to go through every single one of them to talk about it because that would be a 30 minute video. The other thing that we're talking about here is pseudo elements. 
And the difference with pseudo elements is that they don't exist as a tag. We're not talking about a specific tag. We're creating something that can be styled after and before. Well, if we come down here, if I look at this H1 tag as an example, I have the content for my H1 right here. This is the text node, which is a child of the H1. After and before, these first two pseudo elements, notice they've got two colons instead of one, a pseudo element would be creating content here is before, after would be right here, still inside of the H1 element, but before and after whatever the other content is. So injecting content here, injecting content here, that is the after and before. So as an example, I'm going to turn on all these styles, come up here, there we go, refresh the page, there we are. So I have these little happy faces, these emojis that have been injected as the content after each one of the paragraphs. So I have a paragraph that had these two elements, there's an emoji, and then I've got a paragraph for the other three which have the emojis injected and the font size is being inherited from the paragraph that they're inside of. And there's a little bit of extra padding here at the end, that's this one REM to keep them from being pressed right against this text. Now, first line, well it's the first line of whatever I put in front of here, so my paragraph, I changed the first line of each one of them to black as the color, and the first letter, I made the font size 3 REM as opposed to the regular 1 REM for these two or 2 REM for here. So I've made the first letter much larger. This is one that's uh, commonly used in a lot of print publications, which can be done to some nice effect as well on the web. Selection. This is if you are clicking and dragging, if you're selecting some text. So let's say right here, I select this part. There. I've got a background color of gold and the text color red. That is what I've applied. And my hover styles, you can see, are still working, but the selection wins out over top. Uh, the last one here, Q, has to do with Q points. If you've got a web VTT file, this is the, um, the closed captioning for a video file or an audio file. Um, you can put some styling. It's not supported everywhere right now, but you can put some styling, some audio styles through CSS onto the content or onto the uh, content that's being displayed from the v web VTT file. That's what the queue is for. Uh, and that's it. That's pseudo classes and pseudo elements. So pseudo classes, it's an existing tag that's having a change be made to it. So there's a state, there's some sort of impact being made by the user of the browser to an existing element. Pseudo elements are ones that you're creating. There is no tag around this first letter. There is no tag around the first line. There is no tag inside here where I'm putting in this emoji. I'm creating that content through pseudo elements. So I hope that helps you out. Hopes that uh, helps you style your pages more effectively. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. If this was really helpful to you, then please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.